for discussion now is partial veneer crowns. Partial veneer crowns are best indicated when you have good amount of food structure left and you, where you have to maintain aesthetics. So this will help you conserve the tooth structure leading to minimal invasive dentistry. So what is a partial veneer restoration? This is a type of restoration where it covers all but one coronal tooth surface. In the sense it can be either buccal or the facial surface. Coming to type of partial veneer crowns. It is divided according to the area. Like for posterior teeth it is either uh, 3 quarter crown, modified 3 quarter crown, 7 8 crowns and a proximal half crown and for anterior teeth it is a 3 quarter crown or pin and clenches. What are the indications of partial veneer crowns? Where do you indicate such type of crowns? Uh, in posterior teeth that have good amount of good to moderate amount of tooth structure in such cases you can preserve the good amount of remaining tooth structure and you can only cover the destructed tooth structure and in case of uh, if you have to use any tooth as a retainer for small FPD and also if there is any occlusal correction required in such cases you can leave some part of axial structure intact and just cover the occlusal surface and some amount of proximal surfaces for retention and such crowns can be used as wood retainers for a short span FPD. And in cases where you have to re-establish anterior guidance in anterior teeth. Suppose if you have to change the occlusion scheme. If you think the anterior guidance is not proper. In such cases, you can just cover the incisal and the lingual surfaces. Developing a good anterior guidance according to what is required. And what type of occlusion scheme you are planning. And in cases where... Uh, uh, a tooth has good amount of uh, remaining dentin structure and minimal reduction can help in good retention. In such cases, you can use this type of tooth structure and if you if the tooth can take good retentive features that you place like bruxes or grooves with the amount of tooth structure it has, in such cases, you can go ahead with a partial veneer crown. And if you feel it will be compromised due to such retentive features, it is better you go with a full veneer crown. So it is all dependent on the amount of tooth structure it has after any inset the tooth faces that is it can be a restoration uh, which was done earlier or it can be a decay or it can be any fracture coming to contraindications in cases of teeth with short clinical crowns in such cases as such the length is very less which will compromise the retention and added to that if you just go ahead with the partial veneer crown in such cases the retention will be very compromised and you can't go ahead with such type of treatment and in cases of long span FPDs you can't use partial veneer crowns as good retentive features or good retainers and it is rarely suitable on teeth with endodontically which are endodontically treated because after endodontic treatment the tooth will be actually brittle and also there will be slight change in shape so once you go ahead with such type of partial veneer crowns due to the brittleness there are chances of fracture and also there will be problem with the shade matching as you won't be covering one part of tooth structure and in dentitions with active caries or periodontal disease it is better that you first treat the uh, uh, caries or the periodontal disease and accordingly go with the treatment planning. So in cases of teeth with active caries, if you go with such type of partial veneer crowns, there are chances that there might be uh, other secondary development of caries in other uncovered areas. In such cases, it is not indicated. And in poorly aligned teeth, as such the uh, tooth is poorly aligned, the forces will be uh, angular when compared to vertical forces which can be better supported. In such cases, when you have to cover the alignment, your partial veneer crowns won't help. Coming to the advantages. The first and foremost advantage being the tooth structure sparing. So you will be able to spare some amount of tooth structure and much of the margin is accessible. Okay, only some part of the tooth will be covered by your finish line and hence hygiene can also be maintained. And less restoration margin in proximity to gingival crevice. And an open face partial veneer crown is a best indication and it will give you good guidance when you are cementing it. So you can actually see if there is proper seal between the restoration and the tooth also at the proximal uh, surfaces and also at the 
gingival surface where you are actually seating the restorations. It is best indication. Whereas in case of a full venue restoration, once you try to cement it, there will be some amount of suction developed. This will act as a hydraulic cylinder and this will give you some resistance for seating when you are loading with the looting cement. In such cases, you won't get uh, any proper indication that if the restoration is properly seated or not. Also in cases, if you have to check the vitality, that is always possible. And as you leave one surface untouched, you can maintain the aesthetics. Shade matching won't be a problem in, type, in this type of restorations. Coming to the disadvantage, it will have less resistance and retention form. As you will be covering very less surface and also you will be limited to some amount of tooth preparation. You can't have a play on the amount of tooth preparation. Hence, the retention and resistance will be compromised. That is why you can't use such type of restorations as retainers for long span FPDs. And preparation of tooth is difficult. As it has many features that are to be incorporated into the preparation for improved retention and resistance, it is very difficult and can be done only if you have a good dexterity and also a good laboratory support. And in the placement of grooves, boxes and pinholes, it requires extreme dexterity. And in cases of uh, uh, aesthetic zones, if you are not good enough in preparing, you might lead to show up of a metal or there might be chances of metal display. These preparations shouldn't exceed or cross the contact area and shouldn't exceed buckling. So in such cases, you can't avoid any metal display. Coming to the armament area required in preparation of partial veneer crown. So looking at the table, the first instrument required is a round and tapered diamond. So this is helpful in first placing development uh, depth orientation groups. So with the help of the depth orientation grooves, you will make an index of amount of tooth reduction required. Once that is done, you will go ahead with the occlusion reduction. After the occlusion reduction, it is the functional gas level. So with a rounded tapered diamond, you will be able to attain all these three features. Next, coming to the torpedo diamond. It helps in axial reduction under sham placement of a chamfer finish line. So torpedo diamond has a rounded uh, end which is like a flame so with this you can place a even smooth finish line which is chamfer and then even amount of axial reduction and short needle it is used to break proximal contact in cases of posterior teeth and a long needle is used in case of anterior teeth where you have to break the proximal contact small wheel diamond this is used to attain lingual reduction tapered fissure bar this is helpful in placement of a seating groove, a proximal groove, occlusal and gingival bevels and final smoothening and finishing. So this tapered fissure bar is helpful in attaining your retentive features like your seating groove, proximal groove and also the bevels which you require on the final preparation. Then a small diamond. It is helpful in a pin preparation where this will help in additional retentive feature on the finish line because you will be preparing only some part of the tooth structure. Twist drill. This is again important in pin preparation. Then torpor over. It is again, uh, it is this repeated point where it will help you in axial wall reduction and placement of a chamfer. Then flame bar. It is to flare and finishing of a bevel. Coming to the preparation of maxillary posterior three quarter crown. First, you have to select a tooth. Once you are okay with the tooth, and if you are sure that you are going with a three quarter crown, start with the occlusion reduction. Take a tapered rounded diamond and then place depth orientation grooves. If depending on the type of restorative material you are using on the occlusion surface, your preparation will be detected, the amount of reduction required. If it is totally cast metal, then your reduction will be 1 mm on the non-functional cusp and 1.5 mm on the functional cusp. If it is forcefully infused to metal restoration, in such cases, you have to exceed your preparation up to 2 mm on the 1.5 to 2 mm on the functional cusp side and up to 1.5 mm on the non-functional cusp side. So once you place depth orientation grooves and achieve proper occlusal reduction, go ahead and place a functional cusp bevel. 
here you have to place your bar, your round and tapered diamond at an angle of 45 degrees to the axial surface and prepare this functional cusp bevel. So once the functional cusp bevel is prepared, you have to go with the lingual reduction. So take a chamfer bar which is a torpedo diamond and reduce the lingual surface. So it will be up to 1 to 1.5 mm depending on your type of restoration. So once you attain this lingual preparation, you have to stop it just lingual to the contact. Never break the contact to maintain aesthetics. And at the area where you stop at the lingual surface, you have to give a proper seating group or a retentive group on both the surfaces. which should be parallel to the incline of your facial surface. So this seating group helps in proper path of placement. So if required and if you have to cover or extend slightly facial then if the restoration demands you have to even break the contact and at the point where you stop you have to limit the reduction there and take a straight fish over and place proximal or seating groups. So this is how the seating groove will be there. You have to stay 0.5 mm away from the chamfer filage line which is developed with the help of a torpedo and extend up to 0.5 to 1 mm into the tooth structure. So that will lead to a, to a good proper groove and guide in the proper placement. And it should be placed as facially as possible and it should be the inclination of the groove should be parallel to the uh, facial angle of the tooth. And occlusal offset. This is one retentive feature where you will place with a tapered fissure bar. So after the reduction, the area where your restoration is ending, you have to prepare a step kind of thing using a tapered fissure bar. So this will lead to good amount of reduction there and it will help in uh, as a stop, as an additional stop where the restoration will be limited to the maximum facial as facial as possible. So after you attain this occlusal offset, there will be a thin sharp margin developed facially. So you have to take a flame bar and finish it off. Once this is rounded, you will lead to formation of a good bevel. So this will help in proper adaptation of your restoration. If it is metal, it will help in proper burnishing of the metal. So we have discussed about the facial bevel. And then if you look at the picture, you will have an idea of the final preparation and what each factor helps in. So the proximal groove will be placed next to the proximal flare and these together will help in retention and the facial finishing bevel will help in proper adaptation of the metal and occlusal offset acts as a secondary retentive feature and also as a stop. That is how it helps in retention and the amount of reduction as it is more in that area it also helps in structural durability. Then chamfer filage line for proper margin adaptation. Then axial reduction to incorporate the good amount of restorative material required and a functional cusp bevel to help in strength of the restoration at that area as it is the area of function and a planar occlusal reduction. Coming to the variations in the type of three quarter crowns. So there can be uh, two proximal grooves on both the sides or it can be even uh, extended to proximal boxes. If you have more amount of tooth structure and if you feel uh, you need more amount of reduction or retention in such cases you can incorporate proximal boxes in place of proximal grooves. Coming to mandibular posterior three quarter crown. So how is this uh, different from maxillary three quarter crown? Only difference is the type of functional cusp. In lower it is the buccal cusp and in the upper it is the palatal cusp. So this is a molar, mandibular molar where the features are all the same. The redu uh, reduction protocol and the steps are all the same. So if you can just see the picture you have a planar occlusal reduction which is the first step which is extended proximally. Uh, into axial reduction and you place a proximal groove, a chamfer finish line for good uh, marginal adaptation and then a facial bevel on the buccal, uh, buccal surface where your restoration is ending. After the occlusal offset is placed, you will flare it up with a uh, flame bar. Then occlusal shoulder. 
The occlusal offset in anterior teeth is nothing but the occlusal shoulder in the posterior teeth and functional crest which is inevitable. Coming to the 7 8 crowns. These are indicated in maxillary uh, molars mostly where your facial or the mesiofacial uh, cusp is left untouched. So as your some part of your maxillary mesial surface is visible in the aesthetic zone, in such cases if the smile is broad and if it is visible you can go ahead with your 7-8 crowns on the maxillary molars where it helps in uh, maintaining the aesthetics because shade selection is always a problem if you have to match with the natural teeth and once you go ahead with such type of restorations your shade selection won't be a problem. So in case of aesthetics it will help you yes if it, if the, if it is in the smile zone and if, it, if the smile is very broad in such cases go ahead with this. So better retention and resistance as the tooth itself is broad and you will be sparing only one cusp so the amount of tooth reduced is almost like a full veneer crown hence it will have improved retention and resistance forms and it is considered it can be even considered as a retainer for a bridge because of the more amount of coverage and also improved retention and resistance form and also uh, uh, if, if the span is even exceeding on pontic not just short span FPDs in such cases also you can take it as a retainer so this is how the maxillary 7-8 crown looks where only the facio buccal, mesio buccal cusp is left untouched. You can even extend it to the occlusal surface or one modification is just leave the facial surface, the mesial half of the facial surface which is left untouched. So the retainer features are, this, are all the same just like the uh, three quarter crowns. It will also have the same occlusal shoulder, facial bevel. Um, uh, the functional cusp level, occlusal offsets and the same finish line which is your chamfer finish line. Proximal half crown. It is a type of restoration where you will be covering only one proximal surface. In cases of any tilted second molar after long standing missing first molar, such cases if your second molar is tilted, if you can't go ahead with more invasive treatments like intentional root canals and all, in such cases it is better you go with such type of restorations, a proximal half restoration which can be a mesial half crown in case of a lower mandibular, I mean mandibular second molar. So and also the distal, if the distal surface is caries free and if you want to leave it untouched you can go ahead with the proximal half crown and if there is any minimal interproximal caries where you need not involve the surface such cases it is well indicated so this is how the mesial half crowns look so you have to extend it as axially as possible on facial and lingual surfaces so at the area where you stop you have to place your retentive grooves guiding your path of placement then the bevel the occlusal offset grooves planar occlusal reduction Axial reduction, chamfer are all the same. It is just as you do it on any other type of partial veneer crowns. So now that you understood type of partial veneer restorations that you can give, the indications on which tooth and uh, the steps how you prepare the teeth, it is uh, dictated by your proper diagnosis and treatment selection. So once you are clear with what type of restoration you are giving, just Follow the protocol of preparation stepwise and then achieve good results in retention.